Now, um, football lovers will know that for the past two decades, really, uh, the Spanish football we've seen has been magnificent. Two great clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid, have been the dominant forces uh, in club football in Europe. Spain uh, won the European Championship twice. Wonderful team, 2008 to 2012. And in 2010, uh, Spain won the World Cup, which was held in South Africa at that time. So many great, great players um, in those uh, clubs um, and in the Spanish national team. Uh, wonderful, wonderful players. Now, uh, Spanish football is struggling, really. And the two great clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid, really have, uh, they're no longer a force in Europe. Uh, and they have their problems internally as well. So it is, I think, the end uh, of that golden age um, and that beguiles so many people. Uh, and we're joined now from Spain, from Barcelona, by Richard Fitzpatrick, an Irish journalist working there uh, to talk about the latest in uh, this rather sad story. Richard, uh, there's never been better football played than by that Spanish national team. Iniesta, Xavi, people like that. Um, and, of course, at club level, Lionel Messi uh, playing for Barca, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo playing for Real Madrid, Real Madrid winning three consecutive Champions Leagues uh, under Zinedine Zidane. And now uh, all we see is, uh, particularly in the case of Barca, um, the disintegration almost of a club. Uh, let me ask you first about uh, Barca and Lionel Messi and the mess they're in because it was very, it's very recent. On Tuesday night, they lost at home 3 0 uh, to Juventus uh, in the Champions League. Last Saturday, uh, they lost uh, to newly promoted Cadiz 2 1, which is absolutely incredible. Um, Barcelona and Lionel Messi. Messi, I watched him very carefully against Juventus. He did look demoralized. Uh, body language wasn't great. What's happening there? Yeah, it's it's dramatic. Uh, the decline, like um, that defeat um, midweek to Juventus in the Champions League, was the first time since 2013 Barca had lost at home in the uh, in the tournament at the Camp Nou. It was the longest running undefeated uh, record in in that. Uh, competition um, and if we think even when they played um, Bayern Munich famously in the quarterfinal of the Champions League in the summer in August they went, Barca went into that game for the first time as underdogs in over a, a decade in a European um, football match um, but the, the, the wheels have completely come off um, they're no longer a feared outfit in Europe um, they were well beaten 3-0 by Juventus it was kind of 20 minutes in particular that just did for them um, but they're very weak um, Koeman came out after the game and said they were playing with fear they lacked intensity um, domestically um, they've, they've qualified for the knockout stages of the Champions League because they were in um, a very easy group with um, two lightweights um, Dynamo Kiev and uh, Ferenc Varos um, but domestically they're they're in all kinds of trouble they're already 12 points behind Atletico in La Liga um, the league is beyond them now no, no team has ever come back from that big a distance to win the league title um, and it's only in December um, uh, it, the the team just looks insipid, and Messi is is a big big problem emotionally. As you you touch on, he just is not doesn't look a happy guy. Uh, there's the huge um, uh, soap opera during the summer about him trying to escape from the club, and he wasn't uh, let in the end. The club held on to him. They were squabbling over a, a contract clause, um, which would in theory would allow him to to go on a free transfer. That now will kick in next summer um, on January 1st. Um, he will be free to negotiate with other clubs for his departure. Um, what's hanging in the background is there 
has been a regime change or the, the club is going through a regime change at the moment. Um, their disgraced former president, Josep Maria Bartomeu, had to resign um, at the end of October after the Clasico defeat to Real Madrid. So there's an inter, interim president at the moment managing the club, waiting for the presidential elections on January 24th. Um, that will dictate um, uh, what happens with Messi, whether the new incoming president will be able to persuade him to to stay on at the club or not. Um, but there, there's huge implications there because of the, the weight of his personality and in particularly, particularly his salary um, at the club is, is crippling um, the finances of the club. What, what does he earn... Um, what's he on? Uh, give us a, a thrill, Richard, and tell us how much Lionel Messi earns every year. Yeah, it's it's staggering. Um, he earns. He he renegotiated his contract back in 2017, and um, that was the kind of 9-11 that summer for Barca because of the Neymar transfer. Um, it shifted the plates in football. Um, Messi. It was really interesting that. That transfer kind of broke around the end of July or early August 2017. But Messi had been due to um, sign his new contract in June, a few weeks beforehand, but he held off. He went off to Argentina to get married and his contract wasn't finalised until later that summer after the Neymar transfer had gone gone through. And that um, just inflated the whole football market. So he got well, this how much? How much did heart. Neymar go for? Uh, he went to Paris Saint Germain for transfer fee of about two hundred and twenty yeah. six million. It shattered the the previous record had been the year before Pogba um, from Juventus to Manchester United. Yeah. So Messi got this four year contract uh, guaranteeing him one hundred and six million a year. Um, it, like that, absolutely dwarfs his his peers in in the game. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar, their salaries are like uh, about half of what he earns. So, uh, um, because of the situation with the COVID, Barca's income has just fallen off a cliff. They they were down two hundred million last season, three hundred million at least this season. And um, so the, they've had to defer their salary payments um, in January. They can't play pay the players their wages um, and it, it all or a lot of it hinges around Messi be, because of his exorbitant um, salary. Now look he, he's, he's earned it over the last many, 10 years. Many people years. would say it's, it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, we, I, I get what you're saying Richard and um, to put all of this uh, in context at, the, at this, put this moment in context uh, the, they haven't had a uh, a coach of any real substance since uh, Luis Enrique left and who, to manage the Spanish national team. And now they have a new coach, Ronald Koeman, highly regarded in the game, was a great player, scored a winning goal for Barcelona in a European Cup final. Uh, that's uh, now changed name to the Champions League. Um, and he went back there in the summer. And that's been a disaster as well, uh, hasn't it? He's alienated... Uh, lots of people, including Lionel Messi. Yeah, it's not happening for Kuman. There's been a remarkable restraint and patience uh, with him. Normally, pe people are very quick to to um, attack the coach um, at the top clubs in Spain. But because of the circumstances, there has been a lot of patience with him. But it's not happening. Um, he, uh, the, the club, as we've outlined, are, are languishing in mid-table in the league. Um, he's... He's, uh, he's got a problem with the squad composition. Um, the club, uh, um, because of the disgrace against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, the A2 defeat in Lisbon, they rushed to um, kick out a load of their um, star ageing players. Um, some of them were troublemakers, Arturo Vidal, Luis Suarez, friends of Messi. Um, but chiefly the reason, um, even more than a, a squad rebuild, was they needed to get those high-paying players off this off this um, the wage bill. Um, so they got rid of Suarez, Vidal, even Rakitic, um, uh, Rafinha. These guys would all have a market value each of about 20 million, like 80 million, 90 million you're talking about their yes. um, value. They were sold for, I think, about 6 million in total. 
and the club was so desperate to sell them. There was a, a big drama about the sale of Luis Suarez because they sold him to um, a, a, a rival, Atletico Madrid. The club had, had had put a list together of clubs they couldn't sell Suarez to and uh, five or six of the top clubs in Europe, they forgot to put Atletico on that on that um, list. There was a last minute scrambling. They were trying to um, cut off the deal. The, the deal eventually went ahead. He went to Atletico Madrid. He scored and he's five scoring goals. Scoring goals, five goals in seven games, and it's 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 really pointed because Barca are left without a centre forward now. Um, they've been using um, either Messi as a false nine, but that's not really working. Um, that would have been the lineup during the week against Juventus, or they've been using Martin Brathwaite. And this guy they bought um, in the winter transfer window last season. Uh, from Leganes, he was just a stopgap measure because they had a lot of injuries. Um, he, he's, I mean, Irish fans might remember he, he was an unused sub against Ireland in the World Cup qualifier back in 2017. That 5-1 defeat. He's, he's not a star um, striker, but uh, 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 Koeman has to resort to playing him because he's, he's, been, he's lost Suarez. Yes, and part of Koeman's. Um, um, idea when he arrived in Barcelona, I think, and you'll correct me, but I think uh, we had a conversation at that time, Richard. He came in and and talked to Messi uh, and basically sent out a signal, every player is the same here. Uh, There's um, no player is uh, better than anyone else. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, Okay, Messi, uh, he has the same disciplines. imposed on him as all the other players that kind of uh, talk wasn't it mm-hmm. yeah exactly it was the sergeant. not a great idea when you're dealing with what the with what many people believe mm. is the greatest player ever to play the game of course uh, ronaldo fans will dispute that but um it didn't prove a winner did it in his relationship with messi yeah, I mean, Messi is famously uh, surly and indignant towards coaches. He, he's he's um, he's always just uh, looked after himself on the pitch and done the business. Um, Koeman come, uh, came in with such huge prestige, and this is what's um, safeguarding him at the moment from criticism. And um, because, as you reference, he's a he's a club icon. That that famous goal at, at Wembley yes. in the European Cup final in '92, he scored. Um, so he has credit in the bank. Uh, so far, he's he's uh, got a good, robust relation, working relationship with Messi. He's cracked the whip, but uh, they haven't fallen out. Uh, Messi has responded. The problem with Messi is more he's lost his best friend, Luis Suarez. He's absolutely disgusted with um, the institutional setup at the club with the directors. Um, he came back from Argentina on the last international break at the end of November and he was met in the airport um, by the tax authorities that climbed onto the plane and quizzed him for half an hour. Wow. Then he, he got off the plane. He, he's, had tax, he's had tax issues before, he and I think his father, who's his agent. Yeah, exactly. He was the first big fish um, um, to go down a few years ago, for, uh, first of the big footballers to get caught um, with uh, money laundering and, and ta- t- or, uh, diverting his, t- his tax offshore. Um, he got a suspended jail sentence of 19 months um, and, a, and a hefty fine. Um, after he um, got off that plane a few a few weeks ago, back in the airport in Barcelona, after uh, an upsetting conversation with the tax authorities, he was met by a scrum of reporters. They were uh, asking him what was going on between himself and Griezmann, Antoine Griezmann, his uh, yes. teammate at Barca. His ex-agent had come out in a press interview saying that Messi uh, has a, a, a reign of terror at, um, at Barca. He, he's been really unhelpful to Griezmann. Griezmann settling in at the club. This created a big, more um, drama at the club. Messi said, why am I always the problem with with everything at the club? He's deeply unhappy. Um, he's under all this kind of pressure. Um, and the, the problem is he's just been so good and he's, uh, he's just eaten the club. His, his personality is yes. so big there. And he's only scored two goals from open play this season. 
which is extraordinary uh, given uh, how gifted uh, he is. And the, the for people in this part of the world, the possibility of him uh, going to Manchester City has excited everybody who loves the Premier League. PSG in Paris, of course, are also, I understand, in the frame. He is free, as you pointed out, Richard, from January 1st to negotiate with clubs with a view to joining them uh, in next summer for the following season. Um, what's your take on that? And, and how likely is he, A, to leave? And if he is to leave, um, how likely would it be that he might prefer PSG where Neymar is and playing well, I have to say, um, at the moment, um, to choose them over Manchester City where his mentor and uh, coach Pep Guardiola is? Yeah, I would say it's, it's very likely he will go given his mindset. He just seems so unhappy. Um, the, he desperately wanted to leave last summer. Um, things haven't improved at the club. Um, so we, do, like we do, ultimately we, we don't know. Uh, things could change uh, given the new president who comes in. It could be Joanne Laporta. Previous, he's the, he's the front runner at the moment. He, he's always had a very good work and relationship with Messi. He was, president of the club from 03 to 2010 um, uh, at the right at the start of Messi's career or it could be Victor Font who is aligned with Javi um, obviously Javi has a very good relationship with Messi um, you know he could in theory come in as head coach next summer and there yes. might be a lot of excitement around that he could persuade him to stay but at the moment, he, he looks so unsettled. Um, it, it looks as if he, he could go. Um, there are, are two clear front runners. Man City, we would have spoken a lot about uh, last August, September, when it, it looked as if he was leaving. Um, they have the connection with Pep Guardiola, who, um, who of course, renewed his contract a few weeks ago until 2023. That um, gives a bit of solidity in, in Messi's eyes to that Man City project. Um, the attractive of the PSG situation is kind of obvious. Messi will be 34 next June. He's got his eyes on that uh, 2022 World Cup with Argentina. He's unfinished business there. Yes. Um, he could have a nice time, you know, playing in uh, without the rigours, you know, of a, of a heavy domestic league season in, in France. Where would um, you rather live, uh, Richard? Uh, Paris or Manchester? <laughs> well, I know his wife, <laughs> Messi's wife, wife has said she would prefer Paris, um, which is another factor. <laughs> right, right. So, God forgive me. I hope there's nobody, for, no uh, Mancunians listening because I lived there for five years and they're fantastic people. It's a lovely place. Yeah. But on the face of it, Paris is more attractive, particularly if um, your wife wants to uh, live there. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 an, it's another, another, another factor, yeah, to play with. Uh, now, this weekend, I, I mean, last weekend, they lost 2-1 at home to Cadiz, who'd just been promoted, which is a, a, actually a result that would have been unthinkable um, just two or three years ago. Um, and they're highly unlikely to win the league. They might even be fighting to qualify for next season's Champions League, which is really uh, amazing when you consider the history um, of the club. And they play Atletico, I think, um, this week, is it? Yeah, no, no, it's Real Madrid play Atletico this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's another big match. I want to move on to um, Real Madrid, uh, Richard, just to finish on the Barcelona situation. Um, Griezmann, uh, who went from Atletico Madrid, he cost a hundred million and is a very good player, but that hasn't worked. Um, the, the Messi, Griezmann, uh, Coutinho also in that mix there, so they've had a problem. Um, on the field, if you like, integrating Griezmann into the side. Now, uh, the future for Messi, do you think he will leave? Uh, it's it's so hard to t tell him and or predict at this stage. Um, it could go either way. We we saw it looked um, it looked f uh, that he would leave last summer, and then he 
pulled out at the last minute because um, uh, it just looked as if it was going to end up in a court case or in the courts um, if he wanted to extract himself from the club. Yeah, but that won't be the case this year. No. It's pretty clear cut now, isn't it? They sorted that out. Um, it, that was about uh, the time frame, really, and had he run out of time to exercise uh, that clause in his contract or to um, trigger it. Uh, that's that's not a problem now, is it? No, it's not. You're correct. But um, when you think about Messi's personality, he's he's like the boy who cried wolf. He's done this before, but, um, screaming to get out of the club because he's been upset with the tax situation in Spain or unhappy with um, with his coaches or, or, or lately with the, the squad composition. Um, but he's always pulled back in the end. He gave a very frank interview um, to close out that transfer saga um, back around early September and he, he said one of the things he mentioned was about um, the distress the um, the potential move caused his family they were all crying all these kind of factors uh, yes. come into play as well he'd have to move his kids out of school so we don't really know what's what's going on in his head and, and uh, whether he would move in the end if it came to it yes and the, his family have been since he was what 13 uh, mm. 14 his life has been there, um, and it is difficult. Particularly, he's not uh, like Neymar, who he gets on with and plays well with. Neymar is a playboy. Uh, Lionel Messi is not uh, of that temperament at all, is he? No, absolutely. He's a, he's a family man, family man. He lives a very mm -hmm. quiet, uh, sheltered life, and there's no extravagances. Um, so yeah, he's he's three young kids, and yeah, he he, he doesn't do any socialising, and um, he's like we said, he's he's lived all his life there, effectively all his adult life, twenty years yes. now in the one place. So he's very comfortable. Now Real Madrid, Richard, um, is an extraordinary story uh, in another kind of way. I mean, Zidane is still the coach, um, but he's been under massive pressure. Uh, he did win the Champions League. Uh, three years running, which is an unprecedented achievement. And for Real Madrid, really the Champions League uh, is so important to their self-esteem because their record in the Champions League, I think they've won it 13 times, is so extraordinary. Um, and yet, uh, that club also appears to be falling apart. They bought Eden Hazard from Chelsea, over 100 million paid, no return, he's hardly played. Um, and they're an aging team too. Sergio Ramos, their leader, their captain, a great player. Um, uh, he is beginning to struggle with injuries. So, uh, and I watched them uh, the other night, a game they had to win. Um, they sort of managed it, but it wasn't particularly convincing. Yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> this Zinedine Zidane, the guy has nine lives. He's He was... Um, Absolutely, hanging over a trap tour at the weekend, um, coming into the weekend. They had to play Sevilla away in the league um, and he squeezed out a, a win. Uh, this was coming off the back of a defeat midweek in the, in the Champions League. So he squeezed out a win in, in the league against Sevilla, kept them alive in the league. They will have to play Atletico Madrid now in another cup final, as they, they call them here in Spain. Yes. Um, if, if they don't win that game against Atletico Madrid, they'll, uh, and Atletico were to win their game in hand, Atletico would uh, be 12 points ahead of Real Madrid. So that would be their league campaign finished in December. And then midweek, you had the situation in the Champions League where they were staring down the barrel of an exit the first time ever uh, in the Champions League that they would have failed to qualify uh, from the group they needed uh, to win the game. And they won 2-0, uh, another um, uh, Houdini act from, from yes. Zidane. And there was huge pressure at the club. Like the president, uh, Florentino Perez, was even in the uh, the tunnel before the before the games. The players went out. You knew uh, he meant business. Uh, they they had to get a result. Um, so Z Zidane, he's. I mean, he 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 is remarkable. He's he he won those three Champions League titles, as you say, and then he uh, walked out the door of the club. They, they couldn't believe he left. Um, uh, before the the World Cup in 2018, and then he he comes back in March 2019 when they were in crisis. He saves them again. 
he got a bit of uh, order. He managed to, to scrape over the line in a bad league title race, uh, league, uh, bad championship last season, but it, but they won the title. Um, but then again, this season, the wheels have come off. Um, domestically, they've been so poor. But um, Isn't the problem with both of these clubs, Richard, that they're broke? In their terms, they they bought... I mean, they had great players. They bought great players. Uh, in Real Madrid's case, the Galacticos, as they're called, the superstars. I mean, they it was invented for Real Madrid. Um, and Barcelona, you know, they've brought so many great players through their um, youth system. Uh, and when they did go into the market, they did so, you know, uh, very purposefully and at great expense. And now... Uh, they really don't have the money to to run their clubs um, that way anymore. That is absolutely key to uh, this, as well as the aging of great players like Messi and Ramos, uh, a great in both clubs. But the money isn't there to replace those players, uh, and the contrast with say the wealth of the Premier League and the poverty of not just the Spanish game, but Italian game also. This is really uh, something that is very new in European football. Absolutely. That's the crux of it. There's been a shift in in the power bases uh, around Europe. Um, Real Madrid, for the first time in 40 years, they didn't buy any players last summer. Um, They've had to... Um, pursue this youth policy over the last few years where they've been buying, placing bets on these young Brazilian kids. They bought three of them, three 18 year olds uh, for the guts of 40, 50 million each, hoping that they will be the next Neymar, the next, um, uh, the next Galactico, yes. as you say. Uh, previously, they would have just waited and buy uh, buy that Galactico like Cristiano Ronaldo at 23 when he was uh, just hitting his prime. Um, yes. These guys aren't, they, well, we don't know. Um, they may work out, but it doesn't look as if they will, any of these guys, uh, Rainier, who's on loan at Borussia Dortmund or Vinicius or Rodrigo, any of these guys will really will really make it. They're, they're not claiming starting positions at the moment. Did team. I mishear you or did you say they cost 50 million each? Yeah, 40 million, 50 million each. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the pound shop for Real Madrid. Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, the, 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 the one big punt they made was on Eden Hazard, Hazard 160 yes, million. And it's really unfortunate. He's just been bedeviled by injuries, although he did have a part in it in, in that he arrived um, out of shape. Overweight, and, yeah. Overweight yeah, yeah. the um, summer before last. But they, they just don't have the money. Real Madrid's financial situation is better than um, Barcelona's. They're at the tail end of a, a stadium rebuild. So they'll um, come out um, in a healthier position in a couple of years' time. Um, they've also... Um, been guarding their finances better than Barcelona. They w- they will in um, they could well make a, um, a a move for Mbappe next summer if he agrees to leave Paris Saint Germain. They have that money. They they actually turned a profit Real Madrid last summer or, um, in their accounts. Yeah, and they do merchandising in that for Madrid is quite successful as well, isn't it? It yeah. sometimes keeps them ahead of Manchester, but Manchester United, I think, are the richest club. In the world, and at the moment, they have their own problems. But that race to be the the wealthiest club in the world is usually Real Madrid are in there with Manchester United. Um, but it it isn't. Uh, it's um, really um, merchandising and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's, it's fascinating. Um, Barca's president Bartomeu, he, when he um, was walking out the door um, after resigning at the end of October, his parting shot was that he he, he said that he had signed Barcelona up for a European Super League. Um, this is a European yes. Super League that doesn't exist yet, but this yeah. is what he was claiming. Um, this is for Real Madrid and Barcelona. That is their lifeline, and that's the only way they yes. see themselves being able to compete with um, the uh, the English Premier League um, top dogs is in a European Super League scenario. Uh, yeah, a European Super League that would uh, be hugely uh, fought over by television uh, 
companies because it would be watched all over the world, I, I guess. And in that scenario, uh, Barca and Madrid would get their share of the television money um, and they would be, therefore, in financial terms, competitive with uh, the big clubs in the Premier League at the moment. Exactly, yeah. But it remains to be seen if the if the big English clubs would want to leave um, their cash cow. I don't think they will, Richard. Not for mm-hmm. that. Um, that. And only a few of them, six of them maybe, might get in. So we, we're looking really at a, a rather sad story. The end of that golden age now, uh, it's over. Yeah, I suppose we can never predict history. Like Bayern Munich, kind of as an example, they re- rejuvenated their yes. squad. They came back. They were, you know, a beaten docket in Europe a couple of years ago. Um, they look strong again. So it's hard to say. It, it, it. I would be more pessimistic than optimistic. Um, if you look at. You know, other great dynasties have, have disappeared, like Milan, where, you know, King yes. Pins 15 years ago in Europe, the, that team of Kaká and Pirlo and those guys, they're not even in the top 20 uh, European clubs at the moment. Um, yes. uh, on the football field, Manchester United haven't been uh, competitive since Ferguson left in 2013. Uh, yes. So it, it's not looking good for, uh, certainly for Barcelona, uh, in the in the near to medium term. Okay, Richard, we're very grateful to you for joining us from Barcelona.